Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be going over my new routine. It's a six day a week program, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs. I'll be doing this for the next couple of months or so. So it'll be a nice change up from the full body routine. Every single day, I'll do the same warm up routine. At the moment, that's on the treadmill, about two minutes walking, then maybe a minute to two minutes slow jogging, followed by 45 seconds to two minutes, you know, good speed running. Um, and the pace will vary depending on the day. I'll just change up to keep it varied. Um, and then maybe two minutes cooling down, catch my breath, followed by 100 um, broomstick twists for the obliques. It's good for ab control as well, keeping the waist really tight. And then just a basic ab circuit. And that's what I do before every gym session. And unfortunately, I lost a bit of strength because of the illness. Um, definitely noticed that on the um, behind the net pressing, I was at 62.5 for seven, f uh, six, and then five. And um, before I got here, I was doing 70K for five. So got a little bit of catching up to do there. Um, so this is a push day, the first day of the week, and it's a shoulder orientated session. So I do about 70% of the work on my shoulders, maybe 30% on the chest. I only do one exercise on the chest, the second exercise. That's why I like to kind of split my push sessions up. So the next one that I do will be chest orientated. Um, it kind of makes sense because you have to start with one body part and you're always going to kind of focus on that predominantly. You can have the most energy going into that, the most strength going into that first body part. So it kind of makes sense to carry that on through the uh, remaining uh, part of the session. So yeah, first exercise behind the net press, second exercise, chest press, the flat machine, three sets of 10. Um, the third exercise, back on the shoulders, do dumbbell seated press, two sets of 10 before lateral raised machine. Um, and I do another two sets on that with the last set being a drop set, a double drop set. So um, one drop and then another drop. And then finishing up with triceps, I do a bar push down to my heavy exercise, three sets on that before overhead extensions, another two sets on there to finish up. Um, definitely felt like my energy was flagging towards the end of this session. Um, you know, not used to training this amount of volume on one muscle group, um, having done full body for quite some time now. So that will kind of come back over the next um, couple of weeks or so. Just thought I'd take a minute to remind you that I offer online coaching and consultations exclusively for natural lifters. So if you're a hard gainer struggling to pack on some size, or you wanna get leaner for 2022, then go check out the website. The link is in the description box below. Simply fill out a form and I'll then contact you via email to book in a free consultation. Thank you. So the second session of the week is a pull day back and biceps. I start off with dumbbell pullovers, two sets of 15. One of my favorite back exercises, I like to start off my back sessions with the pullovers before moving into a heavier pull. Really underused exercise in my opinion, not quite as good as the machine pullovers, but still a worthwhile addition to your back routine. So I move on to a close grip pull down with palms up, which is something I haven't been able to do for quite some time now because of the bicep injury. So really excited about giving these a go. The emphasis on this kind of next training block for the next couple of months or so is trying to get a better mind to muscle connection in that kind of lower lat area um, and do my best to try and add some muscle tissue to that area if possible. So a lot of these movements are focused on that. Um, so I do my close grip pull downs, um, which is a completely different feel, completely different movement to a wider grip pull down. I don't feel the stretch as much in my lower lats with a wider grip pull down. I think it's gonna be a lot better for the muscle mass around your shoulder blades, the rear delt, stuff like that. So I predominantly, because of the elbow, been doing behind the neck pull downs straight into front pull downs of a wide grip. Now switching it to a, a closer grip. And hopefully um, that will enable me to make some progress in that uh, lower lat area. So then moving on to the low row um, and trying to keep the trajectory as low as possible on this, as close to my fires as I can. Really, I could e elevate my um, bottom a little bit, perhaps with a, a wooden block that would help out. Um, but you don't want to keep the trajectory up too high. I mean, if it, if you're aiming to build muscle mass around that kind of rear delt area in the scapula, then that's great. But I'm not. I'm really trying to over overemphasize the arch in my lower back and almost imagine pulling down as I pull the handle into my stomach. And then again, hopefully emphasize that lower lat area. Then I move on to the uh, 45 degree pull down. Um, and again, the focus is on full stretch 
trying to feel it as much as I can uh, kind of underneath the scapula and before moving on to biceps. So for biceps, I do dumbbell, incline, curl, seated, full supination on the biceps, um, which I haven't done in, in a long time. So that's great. I had a wicked pump from this session before moving on to preach curls. And preach curls, for me, it's always the last exercise that you're going to do after a bicep injury. It's always the most difficult, the most challenging. You're more than likely going to experience pain if you've got an elbow injury on an exercise like this. So for me to be able to do that is great. Fully recovered. Um, because you're fixed into a trajectory, it's fully supinated. So if you're going to have elbow pain um, through like bicep tendonitis, uh, golfer's elbow, uh, then it's it's going to be painful on a preacher curl for sure, but straight bar preacher curl or a machine preacher curl. So that's generally the last exercise that you want to add in after a bicep injury. So that's the workout. Do three sets of eight on that. Felt absolutely great. My biceps today are really, really sore. So the third session of the week... The midweek session is the first of the two leg workouts and for this one I start off with squats. This will be a fairly heavy squat workout predominantly using three to six reps. I like to keep the reps fairly low for at least one squat workout. Uh, just feel that it adds just a certain thickness to the fire that other exercises can't really replicate, at least in my opinion. Um, so yeah, noticed a big drop off in strength unfortunately with these. I had to settle for three sets of three at 160. To put that into perspective, two weeks ago I was doing f sets of five, 190 plus. Had it not been for the illness, I would have likely got five reps at 197.5. So you'll notice those compounds if you have a break for whatever reason, whether it be for illness, you know, especially illness, uh, but also like a deload or uh, a holiday or whatever. You'll notice those big compounds will take a hit pretty quickly. That's why I don't really like taking deloads because it takes so long to kind of peak that. Um, strength on those big compounds and you just lose it so quickly uh, so yeah that was the first exercise then I did Romanian deadlifts um, three sets of 860 again probably about 20 to 25 30k off what I was doing before uh, made up for that with a little bit more volume though you know three sets as opposed to the single set which is what I was doing with the full body work um, then I moved on to leg press and it's a very low position low foot placement on the leg press to emphasize quad development as opposed to kind of glute hamstring tying that you'll feel a lot more when your feet are placed higher up on the platform. When they're very low, the angle at the knee is more acute and you generally feel it in the quads to a greater degree. Then I do one set each of um, extensions and hamstring curls before moving on to calves and did three sets of calves, about 10 reps. Uh, so notice that fatigue was quite high for this session, definitely... Um, Felt like my energy levels were, were quite low towards the end, which is kind of expected really after an illness, still not 100% recovered. And um, switching from a full body routine where you're training, you know, three times a week and it's fairly slow paced, um, not doing many exercises at all, quite minimal, then to something where you're doing six days a week. But, you know, as long as I commit to the program and, and stay consistent, my body will get used to that. It should start feeling a lot easier um, towards the end of these workouts. The fourth session of the week is a second push session. This time it's a chest oriented workout. So I start off with bench press. Um, did two sets of six at 100 kilos, followed by one set of seven at 90, very slow controlled reps. Definitely a drop off in strength, a continuing trend um, that I will see for the remaining part of this week, I'm sure. It'll take a few weeks for it to kind of come back up to at least close to where it was. Um, so yeah, that's the first exercise. Then move on to a shoulder press machine um, using uh, like dead start reps on that. I just think the trajectory is a little bit better suited to a dead start reps on that machine. Before moving on to dumbbell incline press, three sets of eight at uh, 36 kilos. Quite easy, just adding, using this exercise really to add in a little bit more volume, not kind of pushing the intensity that high. That will come as the weeks progress, really just using this week, to be honest, to kind of get myself back in the training and used to the six days per week. So do three sets on that um, before moving on to uh, pec flies, pec fly machine. And again, uh, three sets of 10 on that. Um, so the pec fly machine is one where the pad is on the elbow, not particularly keen on it. Um, so I just hold my arms out straight and kind of let the pad rest against the bicep. I just find that a far more effective way of doing it. And as I uh, come up to the pinnacle of the 
of the movement. I just really focus on pushing my chest out and keeping my shoulder blades back. Um, so the first point of contact, if you're against the wall, will always be your chest as opposed to your deltoids. Um, so that's the end of the chest workout. Move back on the shoulders and do the triceps. Um, so front, lateral raises and bent over raises, all 10 reps. I did a set on six kilos and then two sets of eight kilos. Uh, that's pretty painful, this one, um, a real test of stamina. Um, after these, I move on to triceps and I do the tricep push out machine. It's a machine with a pad under the elbows and you push out. Really, really good exercise. I think um, one of the best tricep machines going um, before finishing on the rope push downs. Uh, so got you know serious doms to say the least all over the body um, because of the nature of this training in comparison to full body and obviously having a week off through the illness you know i'm super sensitive to the uh, exercises so yeah massive amount of doms in in all body parts which is kind of nice so that's the fourth session of the week wrapped up so my second back session i start off with barbell rowing i do two types the classic yates row which is a 45 degree angle. Generally, you're gonna place a little bit more emphasis perhaps on the traps, the upper back because of the angle of the movement. If you can focus on it and still kind of get that decent mind to muscle connection, I think it's still quite good for the lower lats if you don't uh, bring the bar too high. You know, if you keep it nice and low, you can kind of just feel it at the bottom of the uh, scapula. So I do uh, quite heavy on that and then I move on to old school row or a classic row, uh, which is my preferred type of row uh, to be honest so you have to elevate your uh, body position with a plate or use smaller weight plates like 10s or 15s smaller circumference so you, you can go down lower basically without the plates touching the floor to increase your range of motion um, and you just let let the bar kind of drag your lats down as low as possible and then come back up um, and try and keep it somewhat strict so you're not coming up too high you don't want to really elevate your back too high and it, of course it's easier said than done when, when you're trying to increase the weight you're doing on the row you just need to be disciplined with that so that's the first two exercises then i do some um, chins using the assistive machine just to really try and focus on the lats with a neutral grip felt really good actually uh, on, on the lats here just the one set it's a failure on this um, before moving on to the dumbbell row for a couple of rounds I and mean, again, with all these exercises I said before, really trying to emphasize the lats and the lower lats in particular. So drawing the dumbbells up uh, to my kind of upper fire area as opposed to my pec, you know, intercostal area. If, if you're rowing, the same rules apply with the barbell. The higher the row, the higher trajectory, the more emphasis you're gonna place on the, the, the upper back in particular. Uh, so I'll move on to some dumbbell curls uh, and then dual handle cable curls, uh, completely supinated, which is a really, really good exercise. Um, I haven't done that in a long, long time because of the elbows, so I had a great pump from that, followed by my forearm work. So I do reverse barbell curl, wrist curls, and then some grippers at the end um, using the hand grips. Forearm development is an integral part of a balanced physique, so it's really important that you make the time to hit the forearms, don't neglect them. Okay, so this is the final session of the week. It's the second leg day. And I start off with seated curls, three sets, and then leg extensions. Again, three sets on that before moving on to squats. So basically, I'm just trying to warm the legs up and make these squats harder than they would be usually. I'm also elevating the heel with a platform. So I'm wearing Olympic lifting shoes and using the platform to really get quite a steep angle. And I'm almost trying to do this on tiptoes, basically. Uh, any kind of leg press or squat that you do on your tiptoes, the sissy squats, for example, you're going to really emphasize quad development as opposed to glute hamstrings. Um, and it feels really good. I might actually switch that to the Smith machine just so I don't have to worry about balance, uh, which is the same as, as what I did here with the lunges. So I started off with the barbell. That's why I was wasting too much energy with the balance side of stuff, trying to go quite heavy. So I'd get more out of the, the movement doing it on the Smith machine because of the fixed trajectory and it worked quite nicely. Um, so after that, I finish up with um, calves. So quite a short session um, for this second leg session. Did a good three sets of calves. Um, quite heavy on that to finish up. So that's the, the full week of training, all six days. Uh, pretty much got doms in every part of my body. 
uh, for this first week, but you know, feeling a lot better than I felt last week, so quite thankful for that. This is my current leg form, definitely downsized a little bit because of the illness, just being sedentary, you know, out of the gym. I've lost about three and a half, four kilos or so. Um, but, you know, really excited to see some decent progress, hopefully, over the next few weeks, especially coming from a kind of minimalistic approach with the full body training, both in terms of volume and exercise selection, to something like push-pull legs. You know, we're doing six days a week. There's obviously a lot more volume there, doing a lot uh, more exercises. So, yeah, you know, should see some great progress. Sunday is, is for stretching, um, just to kind of make myself feel a little bit better, a little looser, ready to attack the next week of training. Um, and this is an exercise and nutrition tracker I've been working on for quite some time now. It's a fully comprehensive tracker, an Excel spreadsheet, where you can pretty much track every variable you can think of for your training and nutrition. All the data is in one place, which makes it really, really handy. Um, and I've been using it to track my training and I've really enjoyed kind of seeing the statistics for um, my full body routine and how that's changed, as you can see, going into the push-pull legs. Uh, so I've got one more page to do for some videos for exercises and then I'll um, get it up on the website and it'll be you know available for purchase on there. I'll do another video um, you know, over the next few weeks to basically explain what it is and what you can expect to see from it. Uh, but yeah, something I'm really, really proud of and I think you know people can really um, definitely make use of. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video then please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more true natural bodybuilding videos. Check out my description box as well for any links to the website and social media and whatnot. I offer online coaching exclusively for natural bodybuilders. Thank you once again. Stay strong.